greetings to people everywhere. Today you will hear a word from heaven that will change the course of your life. I'm believing that as we get into the word of the Lord today, the word will be taught and preached with clarity. It will bring balance and direction and it will lift your faith up to believe in the things of God. We believe that as you keep listening, the power of God will come upon you and meet your need. Welcome to the Hour of Solution. But the enemy kept Jesus silent from 12 to 30. That means for a period of 18 years, the star went in. Until prayer was lifted up. Say, until prayer was lifted up. Prayer will cause you to come out of the woodworks. Prayer will cause you to come out of the place of seclusion. Prayer will cause you to come out of the place of dimness. It doesn't matter what title you carry. It matters when you understand that when bow, men bow their knees and women bow their hearts before the omnipotent God, there is nothing they cannot solve. You can solve any problem at any height by the power of the living God. Say hallelujah. Then fame went about him. They knew him. They used to chide him. That's Mary's boy. That's an insult. Because typically, children were called after their fathers. But that's Mary's boy. But from this moment forward, the dynamics change. There is a strong principality in your bloodline. That you must gain ascendancy over. You must gain absolute dominion over. And by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And through the power of the Holy Spirit. Under the covering of the blood of Jesus. Every power in my bloodline. In your bloodline. That is working negatively the purposes of God. They will not stand the fire and the flames of God. They will not stand in the name of the Lord. We are rescued from the jaw of the enemy. We are set free by the power of God. Him the Son set free is free indeed. The Bible says the fame went about him. Prayer would uncover who you are. As a prayer would uncover who you are. All this time, his fame never went anywhere. Until he had overcome the enemy of a soul. Prayer would uncover Latent gifts, abilities that are stored inside you that has not yet been tapped into. Prayer would break it forth. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He returned into Galilee. Verse 14, the power of the Spirit and news about him spread throughout the entire vicinity. Look at verse number 15. And he was teaching in their synagogue. He, he was not a welcome person in the synagogue. But after prayer, he became the most welcome individual in their synagogue. And the Bible says that he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. These were the same people that chided him, fought him, gave him names, called him all kinds of things. But after the dimension of prayer, the whole personality of our master changed. And I was just about changing for the glory of God. Oh, I know sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world unknown. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I know that I know that I know that there is a God that answers prayer. And if I shall bow my knee unto him, he will answer prayer. He that rules the heavens and rules the earth. He that rules governments. He that rules kings. He that rules cities and states and provinces. The power of the sovereign Lord. I know that I know that I know that there is an invisible God. My nature, I cannot see him. But by the power of prayer, persistent prayer, I know that God will cause my star to shine. Shall hallelujah. God will cause your star to shine. Your star shall not remain dim. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
They returned into Galilee. He taught in their synagogues, being praised by everyone. There are times that there are times that people who don't like you will still have to clap your hands. Because what you are doing, they can never do it. Amen. And you yourself don't know how you are able to manage to do it. Except for the grace of God. And the power of the cross. The power of the blood. The power of the word of God. Can you say amen to that? Praise the Lord. Look at this. He came to Nazareth. Verse 16. He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was. He went into the synagogue. On a Sabbath day. And he stood up to read. Verse 17, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. The recovering of, this is all by reason of the fact that he has prayed and broken through. Amen. Praise God. That is a prophetic mandate, a prophetic word, a prophetic declaration that is closed. But it will be open on the day when your prayer has ascended the thrones of God. Hallelujah. I feel an incense burning here. It will, it will be opened by the Spirit of God. I feel, I, and God will open up the scroll and you will see what your purpose is in the earth by the Spirit of God. And it says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. All of this he's still reading, and he closed the book. Say he closed the book. There is a portion that God has for you. Nobody ought to see it but you alone. Mandi Satosh Kayaba. There is a promise that God has for you, and He is the Alpha and the Omega in it. God will op allow you to open that chapter, and you are, He will not let the enemy see the chapter. He will let you close it in the name of the Lord. What is for you is for you in the name of Jesus. What is for you is for you. It will not be taken by another in the name of Jesus. Opened the book and he closed the book. Then he gave it to the minister and sat down. <laughs> Don't browse about. He sat down. When your work is finished, you sit down. I said, When your work is finished, you sit down. Jesus, right now, is an ever seated master in the heavenlies because his work is finished. He sat down. And the eyes of all of them, say the eyes of all of them. <laughs> in the synagogue was fastened on him. Verse 21. And he began to say to them, This day, the scripture is fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Now they change it. Is this not Joseph's son? Hey, the day of recognition shall come. When you learn to tap into prayer, I said the day of proper recognition shall come. They won't say that, is that not Mary's boy? They say, is that not Joseph's son? Because he entered a realm, changed the situation, dealt with the principal head himself, overcame him, came into Galilee, was received, Glorified by his teaching. And now they, they, they see him in the light to which honor is properly conferred. May your prayer change any sense of dishonor around you by the power of God. May people that look upon you and talk garbage and rubbish. May they not talk like that anymore in the name of the Lord. May you become a testimony in the name of the Lord. Is it not Joseph's son? Is it not Joseph's son? <laughs> Is it not Joseph's son? Come to Luke chapter number uh, 9. 
The place of prayer changes you. The place of prayer does what? Say it will change me. And look at verse number 28 onwards. From verse number 28 onwards. <clears throat> this time he had spoken to them about his death. And, uh, and all of that. And now listen to what he says. This is a transfiguration. About eight days after the, this conversation, he took along Peter, John, and James and went up on a mountain to pray. Verse 29 in the King James says, and as he prayed, say as he prayed. Not before, but as he prayed. Hmm? The fashion of his countenance was altered. I want you to know that. That's very important. His countenance was changed as he prayed. His countenance was changed as he prayed. What they saw him as before they took the journey up to go to pray was not the same person they were looking at now. His countenance changed. His countenance changed. That means that prayer has a way of changing you. His countenance changed. Now, secondly, the Bible says his raiment also changed. It was white and glistering. His raiment also changed. His countenance changed and his clothing changed. His countenance changed and his clothing changed. So it means that prayer produces change. God will not change my countenance and change my clothing and not change my situation. Amen. Glory to God. I wish you would shout amen on that one. Because your clothing and your face is not as important as a mountain that faces you. And God knows that if he can change your face and can change your raiment, he sure can change your trouble. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. If God can change me through the moment of prayer, that as I pray, there is a transfiguring, there is a change, there is an altering, there is, there is a divine performance of the grace of God, of the power of God, that God is changing my surrounding, my face is changing, what I'm wearing is changing. It means that everything that is within my accommodation has to change. Hallelujah. From inside me, there's got to be a change because when people pray the presence of God comes down to where they are and God has not just changed the face God has not changed the raiment God also changes you and thanks be unto God that when he makes our faces radiant and makes our clothes white and glistering he also causes our mountains to become leveled by his spirit and by his power Thanks be unto God who has given us the victory in the name of Jesus. We have the victory. Oh, beloved, we have the victory in the name of Jesus. We have the victory. Shout hallelujah. So here his, his countenance changed. His raiment, his clothing changed. And there is a revelation of some information that you'll never receive until you pray for the scripture has said as he prayed as he prayed look at verse number 30 and behold there talked with him two men which were Moses and Elijah now these men were standing behind the curtain but prayer unveils what is beyond the curtain prayer removes the mysterium the mystery and turns it into liquid revelation when you learn to pray and intensely pray you remove mystery surrounding you and you come into pure understanding revelation you will come into your timeline where you can understand things better because you communed with the divine one here stood Moses a replica of power say power and here stood Elijah, a replica of the prophetic oil. So the prophetic oil. When power and the prophetic oil are in session, ignorance is banished. Unfruitfulness is banished. Amen. Smallness are banished. Praise God. Hallelujah. They are all banished because these are the two olives branch that feed the nations of the earth. Hallelujah. 
the anointing of Moses and the anointing of Elias. Elijah, hallelujah, glory be to God. These are the two personalities that were hidden behind the veil. But it was as he prayed with them, those he took with them, then they saw behind and saw beyond the veil. They saw that these men were. There is a power and a realm you will never see until you tap into prayer. When you tap into prayer, power shall come and prophetic voices shall come from the throne of God. Power shall come. I feel the helper tonight. Power shall come. The power of the Lord shall come and the voice of the Lord shall come. The power of the Lord shall come. Yea, yea, the voice of Jehovah shall come. Now let's read further. And there appeared, verse 31, who appeared in glory. They appeared in glory and spake of his disease, which he would accomplish at Jerusalem, giving him what shall come in front of him. You must know what is ahead of you. Amen. If you learn to pray, you will not be running after any prophet or any big man of God, whatever big means. But you will, you, you will tap into God yourself. You don't like this kind of, I know you don't like this kind of preaching, but that's all right. You will tap into God yourself. Here I educate you to stand on your feet. That you can stand as a soldier of Jesus Christ. You can stand. Stand. Haven't done all to stand. And see the good of God. That you can stand in trials. Stand through testings. Stand whether there is a pastor here or not. You can stand and pray until your change shall come. Amen. Hallelujah. The God of the pastor is your God. So you are not going through all kinds of modalities to get to God. There is only one mediator between God and man. Can I tell you his name? His name is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, glory be to God. Praise his name. We're going to really pray tonight when I'm done with this one. It says, who appeared in glory and spoke of his disease, what shall happen to him in Jerusalem. Verse number 32. We are in Luke chapter 9. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. <laughs> I was, that's what I was dealing with yesterday. They were heavy with sleep. When you have not understood your mandate, you will sleep when divine edict being declared passes you by. I'll explain. I'll explain. Divine secrets are highly treasured assets. Discovering the secret will make you a star. If you don't discover it, it will make you a captive one. Peter was with him. Can you imagine you are in the face of power? You are in the face of prophetic might. You are in the face of the glory. The Bible says they were, their eyes were heavy. With, the, the enemy is bad. Though. Satan knows if I can cause them to sleep, they can miss their hour of visitation. Do you know why when they descended, the first temptation that came to Peter was that as soon as Jesus told them what the prophets have told him, that you in Jerusalem, there is coming death ahead of you. And when Jesus announced it, when they heard, they should have heard what was said. When, amen, glory to God. Peter took him aside and rebuked him. If your eyes are deep, the sleep is falling on your eyes, how would you know when God is speaking? Says his eyes were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory. Say they saw his glory. What concerns you does not concern another person. So don't toy and play with your life just like another person would of theirs. My mandate and mission require a certain level of concentration. Now, so somebody, they can do anything and get about with it. But what God has given to me to cherish and to carry requires a certain level of altitude, a certain level of concentration, a certain, amen, praise God. For some people, they can sing. For some people they can preach. For some people they can teach. 
But I am required to hit a certain level. Say a certain level. You thought you were exempted. You're also required. You are equally required. Amen. No plane flies uh, in through the clouds on flying on uh, 12,000 feet from here to Ghana. It will be a problem. I said it will be a big problem. They rise up to 30,000 feet above sea level. And they fly. And sometimes when they are crossing the Atlantic, they go up all the way to 38, sometimes even to 40,000 feet. Because the higher you go, the thinner the air. Mm. The higher you go, the thinner the resistance. I like that, Holy Ghost. The higher you go, the much easier it is for you to cruise. Hallelujah. Praise God. The higher you go. But when you are, you are playing with 12,000, and 15,000. You hit turbulence. Because the pocket is heavy. But rise above the limits, child of God. There is a place where you don't give your eye to sleep and slumber. I shall awaken my eyes in the night hour. And I shall see what he shall say unto me. He says, but Peter, when they were with him, were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory. And the two men. That stood with him. Verse 33 says, It came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, listen, 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 Master, say Master. master. <laughs> prayer, prayer, prayer will give you ideas. <laughs> say master. master. When the presence of God comes, you generate ideas that were not originally even inside you. Say Master. <laughs> Came to pass as they departed from Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Now, Peter, who is so worldly, who would have gone down to fishing after Jesus even died and when he went back to fishing, Peter said, No, we are not going back to we're not going back to the rest of them. We are to stay here. Because when you pray, your surrounding changes. So your thinking also changes. He said, Master, that we shall stay here. Let's stay here. Let's stay here. There's a realm of prayer you come into. Your whole way of thinking changes. Because the presence of God divine runs through your system. Purges out what should not be. And God gives you a straightforward direction and instruction. Here is Peter, master. Let's stay here. Let us make three tabernacles. One for thee. One for Moses. And one for Elijah. The Bible says not knowing what he said. Yeah, he didn't know what he said because he just woke up from sleep. <laughs> but he spoke under the inspiration of the glory of Jesus. What he said was true in that when you reach a certain altitude, there is no appetite for a certain level of, of reasoning or doing things. When you reach a certain height in the anointing and the grace of God, there is no desire for you to go down. So you start, you have demons talking back at you. No, no, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. So uh, what was going on? So we're having a fist fight with the devil. What did the devil say? The devil said, you fight us, so we're also going to fight him. One lady went to the, the house and took, and took a cane. And that night, she said, devil, you and me, Put a chair there. So I invite you, devil, come and sit here. So in her mind, the devil came. She sat up whipping the cane. After about three hours into that <laughs> warped thinking way of praying, nonsensical, non biblical way of praying, she realized not only was she tired, she needed water to drink. She was a bit getting a bit dehydrated. She was completely worn out, and still her problem still was there. No, we are not talking about that. There's a presence that comes that changes the way you think. And when the presence of God, this presence of God comes, you will not want to go down. You want to stay up. Amen. It says, it is good for us to be up here. Let's make tabernacles here. Your focus changes. Your aspiration and desire change. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. You don't sound too cheerful. I said glory to God. Okay, let me hit you with one scripture. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 19. I told you that when you learn to pray, you become a star. And 
your captivity will soon be over. Glory to Jesus. Daniel chapter 2 and verse number 19. Then was a secret revealed unto Daniel. Now remember that these boys, Daniel and his friends, were captives of Babylon. They were under captivity. They were slaves. But the day you pray and a secret is revealed to you, you become a star. Then was a secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Now, by this, he was invited by the king. Glory to God. I said he was invited. What the story was, so the Bible says that he called his friend and says, let us beseech God for his mercy and for his grace. So it's not that I have a gift, but I have a God. Amen, there is a difference. Not I have a gift, but I have a God. <laughs> Who knows the secret of every man's heart? The Bible said, then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. God will let your star shine like Daniel. You will not remain a captive forever. You are going to become a captain by the power of the living God. Captain's rule. Captain's command. But captives are silent. Captains have followers. Captives are subjected to follow. May God let your star, your star shine. May the power of prayer unveil the hidden, mysterious, latent gift in you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And may you be open up to the divine reality that God is in you and for you and will do mighty things in the name of Jesus Christ for you and through you, through this community, for the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. We are also going to lift our voices tonight to bless the God of heaven who answered prayer, who shows visions in the night. We shall yet lift our voices to him and bless the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Let's lift our voices. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Na krete bo shante kate, rabade ka sota leba, iman de ba shanta, o kata ba shante lebos, rete ka sota lebos, ni bata lebos shante ya, ni krete bo sakatos, ile mrante lebos shante ya, i prake sota eka ile mransos, i kande bo sha, masende be kota, then when their faces radiant. Because they prayed to the Most High. Lift your voice and praise Him. Your face shall become radiant. In the name of Jesus. Then there were faces were made radiant. Our faces shall shine. In the name of Jesus. Victory belong to Jesus. Victory belong to Jesus. Victory belong to Jesus. Victory belong to Jesus. Hallelujah. This has been the television broadcast series of the Fresh Fire Worldwide Ministries. Fresh Fire Worldwide Ministries, bringing salvation, healing and deliverance. happy you listen to the broadcast and we want to give you an opportunity if you have not made Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord as at yet. We believe that by receiving the person of Jesus into your life, your life will be made anew. The Bible tells us in John's Gospel that if we believe on him, 
He will give us the right or the power to become children of God. Your life will take a different turn, a better turn. Now simply pray after me, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and need your forgiveness. Forgive me of all my sins and wash me in your precious blood. I believe that Jesus Christ is a son of God and he came to die for my sins. Friends, if you pray that simple prayer under the basis and the authority of God's word, your spirit has been reborn. Find a Bible-believing church that preaches and teaches the word of the Lord without any fear and grow in it. Or else, just come right by our, any of our services and you'll be greatly blessed. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you.